you are watching Adjuster TV. All right, in this episode, I've got a special treat for you. I get asked all the time, how do you transition from handling auto claims to working property claims? As insurance adjusters, we need to be covered by insurance. We're writing estimates, climbing ladders, walking on roofs, and mistakes can happen. What are you going to do when something goes wrong? Kaplicit. CPLIC, or Kaplic for short, is an insurance company for independent adjusters, formed by independent adjusters. They understand our job and the potential problems that can arise. If you want help understanding what coverages you need and to apply for coverage, head over to cplic.net. The reality is, I've never transitioned from auto to property, so I cannot answer this question just from my own experience. But I love to do research, and I love to interview and ask people questions just like this. So I went and found an expert, an expert in property claims. It just happens to be Matthew Allen, the founder of Adjuster TV. So I had a conversation with Matt. So the question was this, how can you make a smooth transition from working auto claims to working property in your career? Well, Matt, this has got to be a first. It's the first time we've ever done an episode me and you together on screen yep. at the same time. So we've invited people in to the conversation, which is really a question I get a lot. And the question is this, can somebody transition smoothly without wrecking their whole career from doing auto claims to property? And before we answer that question now, I want to ask you, because I quote you all the time in conversations we have behind closed doors when we're developing the path and writing books and stuff and having conversations. Why would someone consider starting an auto rather than property? If someone's just getting started, like why is that a potential career move they should consider? So I, I, after, after talking to you and all the conversations that we have, you know, listening to your podcasts and watching your videos and stuff, it's, it seems like, and I've never done, I've actually done auto. That's not true. I, but I've done it like a, like a photo assist kind of mm -hmm. thing. Um, I, it seems like it's a little bit of an easier in to the industry. So right. in other words, it's there's more claims, maybe, potentially. Um, everybody's got a car everywhere. As adjusters, I think it's important for us to consider ourselves to be claims professionals. Yes. Um, so starting off with auto, learning auto, you're gonna learn the basics of kind of how policy works, you know, as, as you sort of ramp up into it, mm -hmm. right? Totally. Um, you're gonna learn how to schedule, talk to insurers, talk to contractors, which in this case would be body shop people probably. Um, and you'll also learn how to interact with your IA firm. So these, these are all important skills that you have to have, whether you're doing auto or property or bodily injury or large loss commercial or any of those things. So you have, you're always gonna have to deal with a customer. You're always gonna have to deal with an expert. You know, you're know, you always gonna have to deal with the carrier and your IA firm. Um, so I think that auto is a really good way to start. It's a little bit lower stakes, mm -hmm. I think in some ways. Um, than property. Property is a little bit, um, it's harder to get on like daily property assignments. Right? Yeah. As a new adjuster, you can't really, some companies will let you, but most will like say, well, now we want you to have some experience running actual claims on a cat first. So you, you have experience handling volume and you've, you've seen um, water spots and you've seen shingles blown off and all that kind of stuff, you know, in a sort of a volume place where we have like a lot of support. Instead of getting your first claims as a daily adjuster, are going to be house fires. They're going to be <laughs> yeah. Good you know, luck. <laughs> supply line breaks, and mm -hmm. next thing you know, the whole house is flooded. That's those are big, big, big claims, right? Um, on the cat side, they're going to be smaller, and I think you know, and kind of cookie cutter almost. Uh, they're very a lot of similar claims, so you can get used yeah, to the yeah. flow. Yeah, They're very repetitive, so you're going to learn this, the structure of the flow and the time management and the workflow and everything, which is super duper important for handling any, any kind of claims. Um, so as far as like um, auto into property, it seems like a natural transition. Are you looking for an IA firm where you're not just another number? Let me tell you about our sponsor, CCMS and Associates. 
CCMS has been called a big mom and pop firm because they care about their adjusters. They also care about results. The CCMS family is dedicated to training and developing a talented adjusting team. If you would like to be a part of their family, email your resume and cover letter and introduce yourself directly to careers at ccmsclaims.com. And really all you're saying is, whether it's auto or property or file injury or anything, get some experience handling claims. Yeah. Just And if that's auto right now in this season of the industry, mm -hmm. Go for that. If there's a big hurricane next month, guys, guess what? It's probably not auto. It might be right. property. So this kind of changes with the different seasons yep. of the industry. Um, well, great. So if someone has started an auto, I mean, there's a lot of auto damage appraisers, a lot of auto adjusters out there, and they all hear the money people are making in property, and they're going, I want a piece of that. I'm sick of making 60 or $80 a claim or making you know so much per hour working on insurance care. How do I transition into doing especially independent catastrophic property work yeah that's that's your field independent cat property ia matt allen that's what you talk about all the time so how can you help someone kind of formulate a plan like how do you change i mean yeah it feels hard i i give this advice to anybody regardless of where they're coming from um in order to be to make the transition successful you have to do if there's a few things you have to do right so you have to be licensed. And as, a, as an auto appraiser or an auto adjuster, you, you're gonna have a license. And it may be that you have to get a different license in some states, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's critical to have the minimum, the absolute minimum, your home state license or your designated home state license, your DHS, mm -hmm. and about four or five Midwestern states that have a lot of damage. That get, like, because hail is like the big deal in the Midwest, and for most catastrophe property adjusters, um, it's the only thing that you're doing. Yeah. Or, or it's 90% or 85% of what you're doing. So, you know, a lot of the states, a lot of the hail states in the Midwest don't have a property adjuster license requirement. Colorado, which gets lots and lots and lots. Lots, lots of hail. Lots of hail. No license, right? Um, Kansas, the Dakotas, Nebraska, Iowa, um, Wisconsin doesn't have a license, and they get Missouri. a lot. Missouri. Missouri doesn't have one. Um, Believe it or not, Illinois yeah. doesn't have one. Crazy. Which is really surprising. Because, I mean, Chicago is a big city. My very first storm ever was in Chicago. And it was, there were tons of claims. So I would get Texas, which is probably the, the granddaddy of them all, mm -hmm. Oklahoma, Minnesota for sure. Yep, Indiana, totally agree. Right? So I'd start with that bundle. If you don't, you know, if you live in Colorado, get those in Florida, right? Would be the first five I would get. Um, and then I'd get, for sure, Florida. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Then I'd then I'd be working on my New York license. Absolutely, because you may not work there that often, but it's it's one of those places that where there's millions and millions of people live there, and the carriers need people there when they need them. They need them like right now. It's like it, perceived value. It is too, because all of a sudden you can do something no one else can do, or few others can yeah. do. Yeah. It doesn't mean you're going to work in New York, though, because a lot of people tell me, Chris, I don't really want to go to Brooklyn and handle claims. I'm nervous. I'm not a Queens guy. Like, So, I mean, just because you have a license somewhere doesn't mean you're going to have to physically go there right, to right. work those type of claims. There's lots of other scenarios where that license is valuable. Am I right? right? Even in property. Absolutely. So, yeah. And again, I mean, I've, I've worked in Brooklyn. I've worked in Long Island. I've worked in like, and, but you, th it's a whole huge state. I mean, mm -hmm. you've got like the whole other side of the state where there's other big cities, right? Um, but the value of that, if you put that at the top of your resume, that's one of the first like two or three things you got on there. I mean, somebody's going to fast track you. Some hiring manager at the ATS you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they put a New York adjuster license in there as a keyword, but I mean, maybe they do. I would be banking mm -hmm. on it. So, and then I would pick up Northeast and Northwest because those are high, high density population areas and they're a little bit underserved for adjusters. Everybody, you, you say in your videos, there's 17,000 licensed adjusters, you know, in 2017. Mm -hmm. There's over 100,000 of them in Texas alone. Crazy. Which is insane, right? There are a lots of, Seattle Metroplex is a huge area. There's a lot of people and they're underserved by IAs big time. So I'd be getting a Washington license. You know, I'd be getting um, licenses up in the Northeast for sure. So licensing, big deal. And it takes a little bit of time to get those licenses, right? Um, it's not that difficult, except for a couple of them are kind of challenging. The ones that don't have reciprocity, like New York. Um, so I'd get started working on that stuff. 
The next thing I would do is look at my list. Oh, let's learn exact to make. Right, and I, and I would say this: it's not enough to just have like you know an Xactimate, take an Xactimate like webinar or something like that that shows you the basics. And, oh, that's good. Oh, that's, you know, let's assign me claims and I'll be able to do it. You have to, and this is another thing, it's a good a resume thing, is that, mm -hmm. and, and I've, I've had IA firms even tell me this. Some say they don't care if you have a certification or not, they only care if you can do the claims. But if you want to get onto the roster of like higher quality IA firms or like more boutique or like ones that do higher level stuff, I'm going to say get an Xactimate level two or even a level three certification, which is something I haven't said in the past. Which, if you're trying to get somebody's attention, yeah. that just makes sense. Like, yeah, sure, that company that you're talking about who said they don't really care just as long as you can do the claim, they don't know if you can do the claim until they put you to work. Right. But the problem is, how do you get the work? Well, you got to stand out enough. You got to you got to right. show up in a big way. So I, I like that level two, level three certification. Yeah, so. for sure. And and. I'll take it even farther and kind of the, the next point I have, what was the other one? Okay. Um, you have to have quality training, right? Ex learning Xactimate, getting a level three certification, you're going to get some pretty deep knowledge in that, right? Um, you have to put it into practice, right? It's, not, it's a skill that you have to maintain because if you don't, you'll lose it. But also, you have to get the highest possible quality training that you can afford. If you're if you're running auto claims, and you know you're you're you kind of your own business as an auto appraiser or an auto adjuster, then you're going to have to build in a, into your budget getting you know spending four or five thousand dollars at Vail or going a mile high or going to veteran adjusting school mm -hmm. or you know getting the critical like construction those most of those schools um, especially the lesser expensive ones. The, the basic foundations of what they teach you is kind of to meld Xactimate and some construction mm -hmm. together, right? And that's the most basic ones are going to get you that, which is important. If you can't afford anything else, get something. You right? got to get something. Yeah. You got to get something. But if you can go to Vail, which is have a two or three week program, and it's four, three, four, five thousand dollars. That's a drop in the bucket. I mean, and that's that is that's training that is going. To, I went to Vail, right? Mm -hmm. So I, back way back in the day, and they still have the same training program. Um, that I took. This job, people will go to college yeah. for four or five years, four and a half year, mm -hmm. get a bachelor's degree so that they can make thirty-five thousand dollars a year, and maybe in ten or fifteen years they might be up to sixty. And they spent a lot of money, and they spent one hundred twenty thousand dollars, <sighs> you know, eighty thousand or two fifty or whatever. I mean, even if it was only thirty thousand, even if they got away somehow with community college, dirt cheap something yeah it doesn't matter it's doesn't tens matter. of thousands of dollars if not a hundred thousand the most expensive and plus all that time right so you're spending at least you know if unless you're like a super genius and you probably it's a whole other thing but you're three or four years the minimum if you take summer school maybe you can do it three the most expensive adjuster training that there is is twenty two thousand dollars and it's six weeks right and it's a simulation it's veteran adjusting school yeah it's they get, get you the basics. I think you come out of there with your level two, for sure. That's a, before you even they even like train you in the claims process and doing the simulation part. You've got your level two, like the first week or two, um, and then it's they give you assignments. You have to call those customers, and then you have to do the inspections, write the estimates, settle the claim over and over and over. There's like a real storm, and that's the over and over and over again part is the part that that kicks some people kicks their butts, right? Mm -hmm. And makes them wash out on when they get when they finally do get deployed on a property event. They they don't know how to consistently right. do that, to organize even just in the brain, just how to how do you handle that. Yeah. Yeah. So if you if you can't afford I mean it's the, so my point is is the most the most expensive and most, you know, time consuming property adjuster training is six weeks and it's six weeks and it's twenty two thousand dollars. It is a fraction of the time and cost of getting a bachelor's degree. But Matt, I got to be the devil's advocate here because we got people watching, and this is the question they're thinking. But there's no guarantee I'm going to get work if I spend twenty-two thousand or six thousand dollars at Vail or whatever ends up being right. So there's no guarantee in that. What would you say to them? So I think that the reason we're sitting here. Right, and the reason we talk about this all the time, and the reason we do all these videos, is because this is not just like going, 
and becoming a welder or going to nursing school or going to something that's got a, you go to school and then you have that certificate and then you can just move anywhere in the country and become a nurse, right? This is because there's such so much inconsistency across the industry, right? There's so many carriers, there's so many IA firms that serve those carriers. There are little regional carriers, there are state only in mm -hmm, property municipalities. In, uh, yeah, I mean, they're super like mom and pop insurance companies, right? And they may not have a claims division at all. They are, there's, there's no like, like um, sort of standardized way that to, to do claims, mm -hmm. you know, that's taught, nor is there any standardized information about how to like do this job. This is a, it's a real job. It's, you make great money doing it, but it's, it's more than just Xactimate scoping, you know, licenses and stuff like that. You have to know how to manage your time and, and the workflow. And as, as coming from an, the auto side, you've got some of that skill, right? And you, you're either starting to develop it or you've got it developed, right? Totally. It's the people that are successful. It, I think auto or property are the people who uh, have some grit and perseverance and they kind of take this thing by the scruff of the neck and they're, they're going to own it. Right? Well, they've, if you've already been successful in auto, this is my standpoint. If you've already been successful in auto, then you've kind of proven, one, you know how to make income, two, you haven't washed out. So auto's a really kind of first level test. Yeah. And so you're not just jumping straight into the deep end. You yeah. kind of know like, I see my career potential here. I'm making money. I'm not just bleeding <laughs> money for right. a year or two straight. And so I see some potential. And so I feel like if someone's made it even semi-successful in auto, they're a lot safer bet shift into to property to say like yeah i've never done a property claim but i didn't just find about the out about this yesterday i've right. got i'm a professional claims handler right that's what you talk about all the time yeah so um there's no guarantees right none. no matter what no matter what you do so a lot of people want to become entrepreneurs i mean this is america you can yeah. still you can open that coffee shop but there's no guarantee that you're going to be successful anybody's going to like your coffee or like your you know wi-fi might be terrible whatever yeah same thing as an insurance adjuster, whether you're doing auto or property or, or whatever. The keys are good customer service, professionalism, high quality, understanding of the process, and whatever it is that you're estimating, whether mm -hmm. it's you know buildings or vehicles, um, and being fast, being timely. You know, there's there's limits on the sloppy end, and there's limits on like the super high end detailed end, right? Mm -hmm. When you're writing, putting together your file, there's a happy place where. This tells the story. This is too much. This is too little. Find that, and you will be busy, right? Better adjusting school. Those guys they can't guarantee any job placement, right? right. But they have industry partners of people who love their adjusters and will give them a chance, right? Um, IAPath can't make any guarantees, right? But you've got industry partners who love your adjusters and will give them a chance, right? right. It's up to that person. Totally. We can only take you so far. You know, you learn like the basics, like, you know, learning how to do time management from me. I'm going to show you the way that I feel is a really good way to manage your time, especially if, if you're a beginner, right? Do your first couple of few storms that way, your first few daily assignments or, you know, the first six months of your whatever, and then make up your own way. Take right. it, take parts of it and say, yeah, I like this part. I didn't really, yeah, I want to do it with an iPad. I don't want to do it with this. And make up your own way to do it and improve on it, right? The goal is always to be faster and better and have a better customer service. So whatever you can do to do that as an, as an independent adjuster, you, you will be successful. If you can do those three things and people will hire you and people will want to hang, the IA firms will want to hang on to you. The carriers will see your work and they'll say, I really like Chris's stuff, his files, you know, he's doing 20% more than everybody else. His productivity is cycle time mm -hmm. is faster. And his files, you know, he's got it 89% technical accuracy <laughs> on his files. Everybody else is down in the low 70s. And his customer services are 95%. Chris is on the first call list at the carrier. The carrier, when they call Acme claims, you know, IA firm, they'll say, hey, we got a cat in wherever, <laughs> Raleigh, North Carolina. And we need, we need 16 adjusters. And we really want to have Chris Stanley, Matthew Allen, James Mathis, and so-and-so. Right, that's the first call list. Is the carriers calling? The, is asking for specific people from the IA firm. If those people are available, 
please you know, call them and see if they want to You want to be on that list. That's the list you want to be on. Because you've gotten the, not only the attention of the IA firm, but the carrier, who's really your, like the ultimate client. Right? And in a way, if, like, imagine if you're an IA firm and you have like, a stable of adjusters, and the more those people who are like, on that first call list from the carrier, when the carrier call, it's marketing mm -hmm. kind of for them. Because like, well, you know, we've got Matt and we've got Chris Stanley, you know, don't forget. You know, these guys, you know, they're, you know, they're good. You know, they're ready to go right now, blah, blah, blah. You know, and they've got New York licenses, so <laughs> yeah. they're ready to hit it. Value, 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 Seriously. value. Seriously, because, you know, the carriers, they're going to be, they, they do audits or they do, they talk to the IA firm people and they say, hey, listen, you know, we've got, um, X, we bought another company in Western New York, another smaller carrier, they're getting folded into us. So we've got, you know, 10,000 new policies in force in that area. Are you guys going to be able to help us if we have a cat there, right? And I firm. That's when you get those like emails from people saying, "Hey, you know, you want to get, commit to blah blah blah." That's that's they're trying to count up who they've got available, right? Totally, yeah, because yeah. that's they need to be able to present a number of like we have eighty licensed people in New York. Yeah. Oh well, the other I firm only had twenty, so wow, this one's going to be where we go with yeah. the work first. I firms, they're incredibly competitive. You know, it's, and that's a hard business. I have no envy for those folks. Pivoting on that point, I firms. Okay, so the person watching, they're going, okay, I'm going to transition. I'm going to invest in training, man. I'm going to get the license. I'm going to do this. How many I firms they need to get on? I mean, realistically, like seriously, to, to really give themselves some diversity. So I would say that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you wasn't ready for that one, guys. <laughs> so the thing is, is that, that there's there's a handful, probably half a dozen, maybe ten, maybe ten, like big, big I firms, and they have a lot of resources. Mm -hmm. um, there are huge insurance companies, like State Farm is the biggest by like you know the next three or four combined. I think mm -hmm. they're a gigantic company, and so you know if if you want to talk about you're earning money through volume. Right, so the number of claims that you close, not necessarily the size of the claim or the you know what your cut is on the fee bill, just closing a lot of claims is where your your checking account is going to start to fill up with money. So you want to you want to maximize, especially early, you want to maximize your opportunities to get claims. State Farm is going to be a good one to start with. So I would say find IA firms that run State Farm claims, and there's several out there. So there's mm -hmm. you know Everall, there's Ren, I don't know if Renfro does. Uh, yeah, Ren, yeah, Renfro, Renfro does. Pilot does. You know, there's there's several other ones. The best QA. Yeah, um, yeah uh, CNC, I believe, does as well. So, yeah, there's a whole list of, like, I think 10, 12 companies yeah. that work for State Farm. So do you, so each one of or I don't know if each one of those is going to do it, but some of them are going to have, like, certification right. that you can get. Because you, you can't handle, a, you know, like a, a State Farm property claim without being State Farm certified, passing the test, because they want to make sure that you, that you have at least <laughs> seen the estimating guidelines and know their process, right? Um, so I would start with companies that service the big, you know, the all states, the state farms, the Liberty Mutuals. Mm -hmm. um, there's, you know, there's a little bit of debate out there if you want to be more mercenary and just like bounce around, you know, to a bunch of different IA firms throughout throughout your career. Like you're working for four or five different companies on CAT throughout the year, or if you want to like just snuggle in with one. And they're just keeping you busy all the time. Right? Yeah. If you're doing daily claims, you have to diversify because you know totally you're going to get two claims from this company every two weeks, and four from this company every two weeks, and one every month from this other company, and then you, you stack all those up to where you get your 12 to 15, 18, or whatever it is per week, 10 to 15 probably. So That's with a, daily, yeah. So with a lot. So with daily claims. How many on the property side do you think you need to be diversified through? And just on average, obviously, it changes based on location. It's location dependent for sure. And also, you know, if you're in a, a, like a dense uh, metro area, um, it's probably going to be, you're probably going to be able to cover a lot more and probably not have to be with as many IA firms. Like, for example, there was a company I was working for in Seattle area doing mm -hmm. daily claims and they kept me super busy as one company. Um, I would say, you want to try to hit a number and however many IA firms, you know, that you need to stack on there is what I do. And some companies you can run claims for, you know, two or three different carriers, right? Like CCMS. Yeah. They, you can, you can run claims. You'll have two different managers or whatever, but you can do X carrier and Y carrier through one IA firm, which, you know, makes things kind of easier. On the property side or on the cat side, um, I would say because you're on call, right? If, if, 
Pilot or Everill or Crawford or whoever it mm-hmm. is, if they if you're on that first call list with whoever their their clients are and they want you to, you know, be available, then they're going to be grumpy if you don't. If every time they call yeah. you, if one out of five times they call you, you're, you say yes, and the other four times you're saying no. Sorry, I'm I'm busy or because yeah. If you especially if you say oh I'm working for somebody else, you you might get scratched off their list, right? Um, so it I think it pays to develop a really strong relationship with one, maybe, maybe two, two, maybe, maybe two. two. I'm with you there. It's because because one might you know have like a lot of stuff in the summer and then they just they never have anything in the winter. Right, unless there's a hurricane or something. And then the other ones, maybe they've got some stuff that you can do locally. Or... So, so let's talk about hurricanes then. Because sure. you know that's what everybody's looking for. It's what they're, they're right. waiting for. They're hoping for in some twisted way of fate is what we all sit there. So hurricane opportunities, it's what everybody hears about. Yeah. It's what they dream about at night. What's the reality in your 20 years of being an adjuster that how often do people that's where they break in and where they make their money. I think that's it's pretty common for people to break in that way, but it's going to be like Hurricane Katrina is bearing down on the coast and people start hearing about the adjuster job, right? And maybe if you have, we'll just say 10,000 of those people who didn't know what claims were before a week before, yeah. you might have 50 of them that make a career out of it, right? So it's a small percentage. Um, I would say, I would definitely say if somebody's sitting around waiting for a hurricane, that's going to be their big break. They're going to be waiting a while because I've been an adjuster since 1999. I've worked six hurricanes, five of those like on site and one like uh, doing file review, like remotely. Um, I was talking to it's like one every four or five years. Yeah, exactly. Years. Um, I was talking to, to Jared from Bully Bag and he basically said the same thing. He said that he did. He went and ran some Dorian claims, and that was his seventh hurricane. He's been doing it for as long as I have. Um, so it's. I was an adjuster for five years before I ever, before I got called my first hurricane. So where did you make the majority of money, and where does guys like Jared and the, you know the veteran guys oh. who have stabled up, where are they making their what type of claims? One hundred percent hail. If, if for on cat hail, absolutely one hundred percent. So, you know, speaking of training, it pays to you know we're talking about getting like basic estimatics training, you know, scoping and that kind of thing, but also damage ID, getting the Hague certified inspector. There's a, the institutes has a property certification that, that goes over damage evaluation, damage ID, um, construction, you know, Exactware has their ILX. Have you heard about WRT? Okay. I'd, I'd, get, I'd get all that stuff for sure. Cause you're gonna get, if you get, so I would definitely look at like, like training for certifications for like water restoration technicians because mm-hmm. you're going to learn, you know, remediation, you're going to learn how to use fans, you know, how many fans you put in each room, how the dehumidifiers, the heaters, the enclosures, the zippers, the, you know, the extraction stuff, the pressure. I mean, there's so many pieces of equipment that they use. How do you know when to use what? You know, so when you're looking at, at an estimate from Service Master or Surf Pro or Joe Bob's, you know, water mm-hmm. remediation, you can say, it looks good, looks good, looks good. Can't do that, can't do that. Why is that in there? Looks good, looks good. You know, here's the actual, here's what we'll pay you, kind of mm-hmm. thing. And this is how you negotiate with them. Because sometimes contractors are gonna occasionally, some will fluff things up and you wanna make sure you're keeping them. Because part of our job is cost control is to keep right. everybody on the straight and narrow, right? Um, so, so being able to write a water estimate that, that you could, that any company would look at and say, yeah, we can absolutely do it. That's, that'll be perfect. It'll be everything that we need that's going to be super valuable and you're not going to waste a lot of time on a phone or, you know, calling your manager. Oh, I'm not sure about, you know, he's got, there's, you know, seven fans and blah, blah. Your, your manager just wants you to get the claim done and not have it reopened. Right. And the carrier in particular doesn't want that file to reopen. So if you can nail it the first time, any training that you can get, Hague certification, that, you know, Hague certified inspector, you have to have a hundred roofs under your belt already inspected before they let you get into that mm-hmm. program. Um, the, you know, something like that, the IIRC, whatever it is. Yeah. The, you know, water remediation yeah, totally. um, thing, for sure, absolutely. I and think. that's all, a lot of it, that is through the institutes that you mentioned. Yeah. They have a lot of those certifications uh, as I was researching it, and a lot of other companies offer them online training. But yeah, totally, did any certification you're saying, get your hands on. Yeah. And you're mentioning training, and you're like, yeah, you got Hague Engineering, who's like, yeah, once you have some experience, but, you know, You've got something pretty cool going on over at Adjuster TV Plus for those who want to see how do you actually do the job, who yeah. are like, 
I can't get enough practice in myself. I can't even imagine how these claims are run. So why don't you explain to us what you're doing over on Adjuster TV Plus? Because to me, when I saw Adjuster TV Plus, guys, my mind melted. I just start crying. This is so beautiful <laughs> what Matt's doing over here. So ex explain it to everybody who's watching. Uh, yeah, so, so basically um, what I wanted to do was to give people a way to have not only a like a ride along experience where you're you're able to see what an adjuster does when they're in the field it's it's not just like any old adjuster like you go on facebook and you say hey is it somebody in atlanta georgia you know you mind if i job shadow you or whatever yeah. you get whoever you don't know if that person is like a really good adjuster or if it is somebody that just wants free tacos right because you're gonna get... i like free tacos so um it's good right so adjuster tv plus what i've done is and what we're working on and what we're building and what it's, it's continuously updated basically an updated training library of scoping videos and other kinds of training um with industry experts like so i'm doing these you know i pull up to a house here's all the gear that i have here's the first thing i do here's the first photo i take here's how i frame that photo the next thing i do is i do this and, I, and you know so it's it's beat after beat exactly everything that i do when I scope how, like for hail damage or any other, well, lots of, we did several different kinds of losses. Um, I also did it with veteran adjusting. <coughs> oh, uh, getting dry. I've been doing this all day. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I also um, did this with veteran adjusting school with Guy Grant, who's the, the one of the co-founders. That's the $22,000 training guy. Yeah. And Matt's got him walking you through how to do claims. So that something crazy like that and we're also adding i pass auto training in there and so if someone's interested like okay that sounds really interesting man i want to go hang out with you and guy and chris and yeah do that but what is it going to cost them to to do that well how's that going to work so i it's basically a, a monthly fee and it's it's 29 dollars a month i think it's i think it's pretty inexpensive for what it is 29 bucks like this come is, on and the thing is is like for the for the the for the ride along part of it, it's if you were to job shadow somebody, they're going to be like working, and if the second you ask a question, if they you know if, if it doesn't interrupt them or bother them, if they stop to explain it, it's going to take time, right? So if you're asking questions like every five minutes or every ten minutes or whatever, when somebody's doing it, they're do, writing doing their scope and doing all the doing the claim. It'll take them forever to do it. You don't want to do that. You don't want to, you just want to sit there and watch them and maybe they'll like say, well, here's what I'm doing here. And like, you know, one or two sentences. With me and Guy, we're like standing in the driveway for 20 minutes talking about, you know. Garage doors. Garage doors. <laughs> how, to talk, how to talk to the insured. These, you'll, you would never on any ride along or any job shadow at all period ever have somebody spend two and a half hours going through a house. scope. Yeah, and we didn't even, I mean, we scoped the house, but we were like, we'd stop and say, okay, well, let's talk about screens. So we're just standing here talking about screens for 15 minutes, right? You're never going to see that on a live ride along. If you go and help somebody like as an assistant, right, and get paid to do it, I mean, maybe, right? But then you're still learning from somebody that maybe is, you know, doesn't have 20 years of experience like me, doesn't run the Harvard of adjusting schools which he hates it when people call it that that's <laughs> it's what it is guys sorry <laughs> to deal with it <laughs> so <laughs> super, compliment. super excited about it I spent a lot of time um putting the, together all of the different kinds of videos we're developing more um scoping videos more training videos um, we're going to get later on we're going to get really deep in exactimate and it's not like it's an exactimate certification it's uh here's how an experienced adjuster you know handles mm -hmm. these kinds of claims that we just scoped in Xactimate, right? How to write your reports, how to, you know, how to have a customer interaction, how to talk to the insured, what the things you, to say, what not to say, how to, if a claim starts going sideways, I mean, it's any possible thing that you could think of. Yeah, so, so essentially we are, on Adjuster TV, we, we put out a lot of career advice, we do gear reviews, um, we're interviewing industry players and everything. On Adjuster TV Plus, we're getting into the nuts and bolts of like how in detail, like it's really, I mean, honestly, it's excruciating detail. It, it is, but in a good way. Like in the quality is, I'm always super impressed with Matt's quality and like the, the way he runs things on Adjuster TV. But then when I saw the videos, him and his crew put together along with Guy, I'm like, forget it. 
forget it. Top of top of the line. Top <laughs> of the line. So if you haven't checked it out, you need to. Uh, if you want to check out Adjuster TV Plus, you look at the transition from auto to property, head over to iapath.com slash TV and Matt's gonna let you check it out for seven days. No risk. Unlimited access. You can watch all the videos in there. If you can in seven days. If you can. But then and, you'll miss the, the new ones if you don't stay in there. Yeah, because how many videos are coming out at least every month? There's one, at least one a week. One new video a week. That's high-end, best training there is. So, Matt, thanks for helping us understand how to maybe transition from auto to property uh, in people's career. And I think with hurricane season coming up, this is the topic that's going to keep coming up. So I'm glad we're getting this done, getting it answered. And if you have any additional questions about this, feel free to catch up with Matt at Matthew with one T at adjustertv.com. If you enjoyed this video, you'll love writing along with us on Adjuster TV Plus. Myself and a growing list of industry experts will show you how to handle claims with confidence. We know it's hard to find a working adjuster who's going to let you shadow them, which is why we let you ride along with us on Adjuster TV Plus. Check it out for seven days absolutely free at iPath.com/slash TV.